Yes, see here. Revolution. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's see here. Oh, I found it. Just for a second. Well, well. Done. Turn away. Turn away. Oh, hello, folks. Uh, I am the one, the only. Hobo Tom. I forgot about that song there. Sure, that's good enough for that. Uh, pause you. That's pretty cool, though. I remember that at the gym. Well, yeah, that was kind of the wrong song. That was Revolutionary by Faulkner. My terrible rendition of it. Or, like, hopefully only the 10 seconds you heard of it. Um, it took me a while to think of that band's name. I'm not here to talk about music, though. You'll know when I talk about music, because it'll sound absolutely terrible. I'm here to talk about... See the revolution! Oh, no, no. Wait. I did see revolution. I saw AEW revolution. And, wow, that was... I mean, minus... The one match, which I'll get to shortly, or in a little bit. All depends how long it takes me to do this video. Wow. That was amazing. Um, can you give a couple of shout outs? Sear. Big Mass Chess. You, sir. Get. Are an, obviously an air guitar master. Big sale, 59. Yep. Unfortunately, there is always a little bit of lag. Sometimes it's better than others. Um, the setup I have here in the hobo office, which you'll see probably in about two more weeks. Yeah, it's probably not the most acoustically sound place. And the software I'm using, trust me, it's, when I got it, it was still probably four years old. So, I think Vegas video I got for 30 bucks Best Buy two years ago. AVS video <laughs> is free, and I just didn't feel like paying for it. Even though I think like it only would have been like 19 or 19 or 30 dollars, I think I'm not paying for that. I am a hobo, sir. So you're going to have to deal with a hobo production. It is what it is. Live streaming goes a little bit better, but just for that, you start carrying the briefcase boombox. And holy tenchai! You, sir, got that six count.
And that's because I said something ridiculous, and you agree with me. I think it had to do with Chris Stent, Chris Statlander, a position on my body. You're like, yeah. Okay, so let's get this revolution way away. Um, I don't even think that's how the song goes, music goes. Trust me, I don't want any more copyright violations, so you cannot hear the sound. But that was Faulkner, revolutionary. But this, folks, is AEW Revolution. And wow. I couldn't have told you how much more I could have enjoyed this match. Again, I think that was only the one match that was really bad. And that's probably a personal thing on my part, mainly because what happened. There was, a, I think, the two awful spots. Like, really? You don't know how to do that? Whatever. But let's talk about some revolutions. So we start off with the buy-in. Uh, for the most part, it was a whole recap of everything. They kind of reiterated a lot of the, what they've said about being the elite. Uh, Hangman and Adam Page just saying, I'm done with this garbage. Give me a beverage. Uh, John Moxley was there. He kind of recaps what happened with him. How, how he lost sight in his I and recap of Cody and MJF. Uh, so actually, it was fun. Instead of having a battle royal, they just had one match. It was the Dark Order versus SCU, which is always fun. Uh, evil Uno's. All I know, I think I started to cook because I'm like, oh, they're just gonna show previews. So I started to cook. I'm like, oh, that's that's no match. That's that's not that's that's no talk segment. That's a match. That's on its entrance. So the Dark Order, Uno, awesome. This was a really fun match, though. Evil Uno, I just know it picked up. Um, he got kicked to the head. Oh, that was stiff. Snug looking. Then there was a combo and DDT by SCU. Uh, let's see here. Stu Grayson did the backflip. The backflip double kick to each Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian. Frankie Kazarian. Oh, he sounds like beat up a lot. I don't know why. Let's, see, let's bring this over here. There we go. Maybe that's probably better. Or probably worse. You never know. The Hobo Studios. Uh, then the, again, the uh, jumping knee strikes. To get over here. To the scorpion. Get over here. Again, I like the fact that I do appreciate the fact that Dark Order sing through their roots, because at one time they were the Super Smash Brothers, where it was a video, it was a whole video game thing. They have their name, have their name, the moves named after various video games, like the Get Over Here and Fatality. Um, yeah, I forget what their finisher is, but I think it's Fatality. That's pretty cool. Though. Then there was the combo powerbomb, which was fun. No, SCU later, but instead there's a layer to the back of the head of Frankie Gazarian. And there's a reverse roll-up thing by Stu. And the Dark Order. Join the Dark Order. Uh-oh. I don't want to say that too loud. I, I think I'm going to have another guest here. I think, I, th I think the broken. The Von Breaker. The Von Breaker of men. Might be making an appearance in, in March. We'll see how that goes. I have to get in touch with some people. But, yeah. Um, then, I really should do that. When, though? No, I'll figure something out. But this was a fun match. Um, I really can't complain about this match. This was good. I like the fact that they're, they didn't have a battle royal. They want to save their battle royal for their big show. So this makes sense. This is a cheeseburger mash.
And then the next thing, now the Dark Order, they start to beat on SCU. Uh, the other two members of Dark Order and, and, and Creepers come out. These Creepers, man. Come out, they start to beat up Scorpius Guy and Kazarian. And then guess who tries to make the save? Boom, boom, Cold Cabana. Yes, the Batman of Chicago shows up. Uh, so he gets beat up, though. I've, but not before he deals out some uh, bionic elbows to everyone. Uh, he came out, got a huge pop for that. The Dark Order, how there's too many. And then they call out for the Exalted One. And it turned out to be a sword because Christopher Daniels beats up everyone for the Dark Order. Uh, Matt Hardy, I think by the time this video goes up, he would have been released by WWE. I think it's just he didn't sign any contracts, so I don't think he has the 90 day no compete clause. Because there's like, he's like, I'm done. So I think it's, yeah, probably by the time this video goes up, like Matt Hardy will be. <laughs> Exalted one! And I have to. Tranquil, I have to. I don't want to. I don't want the bond break. Anytime soon. Necessarily. Now, but that was really fun, though. Uh, I wonder if this is going to set up for an eight man match on Wednesday where you have SCU and Colt Cabana taking on the entirety of the Dark Order. Because I know there's the other two jobbers that accepted the math. Um, I forget their names. Cutter, I think, was one of them. And I forget who the other one was. I wonder if this sets up for an amen match. If not, if it does, you heard it here first. I called it. Have me book the matches. Yeah, right. Uh, then uh, the opening show proper, we have Dustin. Dustin Rhodes versus Jake Hagar. And it's a fight. They just start to fight. They take it into the crowd. They, more of a fight. Dustin gets tossed into the ring post. Uh, Dustin just fights Jake Hagar. It's just really simple strikes. Um, Aubrey, as the ref, when she's announced as the ref, she gets like, such a huge pop. She has such red lipstick, too. It's like. The red lipstick going to take the place of red shoes? We'll see. Uh, and then eventually, every time they're on the outside, Jake Hagar goes over to his wife, sticks his tongue down his wife's mouth. Good for you, Jake Hagar. I, I think when I had my girlfriend, every time I could, oh, I would just cup a feel. I would put my hands so far down her pants and, and, and up certain things. Yeah, and in her shirt, my tongue down her mouth, up her nose and her ear. In public, too. She hated some of that stuff, some stuff she loved. That's okay. Um, at least she knew for a while, she, like, someone showed her, like, massive amounts of public affection. So, whatever. It is what it is. Um, let's see here. Oh, where was I? I was confused. Oh, yeah, so, so J.K. Hagar would... would would kiss his wife every time he could. And then Dustin! He kissed Jake Hager's wife. I was half expecting Terry Reynolds to show up. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because those two weren't married once. I think last thing I heard of Terry was that she got arrested at a Los Angeles airport I think like five years ago. She, brought, she tried to bring a gun gun onto a plane. Not the brightest thing to do. Uh, then it started to become a wrestling match once they got back in the ring. And uh, so you have the drop chop, the classic, where, where Goldust or Dustin drops to his knees. Yep, kind of open chop. Wrote the Bulldog. Hager did the Vader bomb. However, he did not hit the first time. Dustin got the got the foot feet up. However, they brawled a little bit more. Jake Hager got the Vader bomb in the second time. 
And he was doing the close signs of the corner and the gut wrench power bomb. But that only got a two count. Uh, then they just can beat each other up a little bit. Dustin hit a Lucha Destroyer or Code Red, same thing. It's, it's like a a flippy power, like a flippy, yeah, flippy power bomb, almost. That's a Lucha Destroyer, and of course, once the referee got distracted, it was just as simple of who gets to kick who in the nuts first. Jake Hagar kicked Dustin in the nuts, then he wound up winning. And I realized this is a really old school thing in the fact that heels traditionally have a submission finisher, whereas the face, they have that one big move. So with this, he did a standing arm triangle on Dustin Rhodes, and that's... Not really that realistic. Only because the key to the arm triangle, you pin your opponent's head, and actually this puts pressure. It's a, it's a blood shock. This puts pressure on the carotid artery. You squeeze in on this side and squeeze. And no, I won't. Put, no, don't worry, folks. I won't choke myself up. That, that's auto erotic and not good for YouTube. But. You do that. The thing with that, when you're standing, if you're like this, all you have to do is drop to your butt and you're out. So standing, it doesn't make sense. If he did this on the ground, yes. Because again, you can't fall because you're at the ground. You're at the lowest point. So with that, if they did the arm triangle on the ground, I'd be like, yeah, I can see that. Standing, because uh, then you have to hold up the weight. And if you've ever had to hold up anyone who's even like halfway out of it, like it's not, and if they're like your weight or heavier, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. I think once help carried. Guy off the rugby pitch who was concussed and he's kind of wobbly. And like two of us were like half dragging him back to the side, saying, Okay, you need to see the doctor now. But other than that, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to do to hold, to hold up that dead weight. So it kind of doesn't make that move look, yeah, but that's that. Um, overall, though, this match was a good match. I can't have no complaints about it. Good opening match. It was a cheeseburger match. Then we have the next match was Sammy Guevara taking on Darby Allen. Uh, Jurassic Express was ringside. Again, I wonder if this is going to set something up. Or it's going to be like another eight man tag, uh, Jurassic Express and Darby Allen taking on Sammy Guevara, Jake Hagar, and the proud and powerful of all the people of Inner Circle. So we'll see what happens. Um, match starts off really quick. Darby Allen, he just gets into the ring, just dives right on. Dives, dives right into Sammy. They don't even know the bell. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. And again, you hear. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, get you. And only because they went into that barricade so often. And yeah, Darby Allen, he has to realize he needs a little bit more steam. He needs to put on some leg muscles because he has to launch himself a little bit higher. Because he tried to do a dive onto Sammy Guevara when he was leaning against the barricade. He flat out missed. His head ate the bottom of the barricade. like, And his nose ate the floor. That was like horrible. And then of course you have the skateboard coming in, the skateboard to the face. 
again, skateboard's a lethal, a lethal weapon. Uh, he begins to set up the table for poor Darby Allen, the running knee. Uh, there was a gory special with a finger, and and Dar Darby Allen's the best. He put he put uh, Sammy Guevara into the Fujiwara armbar and started to bite his fingers and just ah chomp. Uh, then Darby also hit a Lucha Destroyer. The Lucha Destroyer is kind of getting overused. It's neat to see because in Lucha Underground, they only busted it, I think, like once per show. So we've already seen it twice for three matches. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit excessive. Uh, it was the, the off balance top rope Spanish fly. How either of those two saved each other's lives was is beyond me because again a top rope Spanish fly something goes wrong someone's breaking something and like it could be neck head arm shoulder leg it it Spanish flies are amazing that's why I can never do it probably because I can't I can't do that but can do a moonsault. And, and oh yeah, that sent on six thirty into the table. Ouch! That was way earlier in the match. Um, eventually, Darby Allen did hit a stunner and then did the coffin drop. And yep, that was a good. That was a, this was a really good match. This folks, they upped their game a little bit. This was a surf and turf match. Let's see, let's take a little, little thing here. Um, so again, this match, so that, that match happened. A little back and forth. Uh, Darby Allen wanted to drive that skateboard into Sammy Guevara's neck. No, that wasn't happening. Sammy Guevara, he likes his neck. And then the next match. So the next match featured the Young Bucks. Versus Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page for your AEW Tag Team Champions. And oh my god, did this not disappoint? This was the most amazing match I think I've ever seen. Um, with the exception of some older 80s tag team matches where you kind of expected stuff. This was amazing. Actually, this and probably Triple Mania has really set the bar. For tag team action. AEW, I've said this so often, but AEW's strength is their tag team division. They're it's literally tag team wrestling specialists. Women's division sucks. Men's singles is it's either really good or it's good. But their tag team, oh, I don't I don't know how anyone can compete. With their tag team division. Uh, Omega and Nick Jackson, they go to start off with a classic wrestling match. It's a friendly wrestling match. However, once Hangman, Adam Page, and Matt Jackson get involved, it was good classical wrestling until Page decided to spit in the face <laughs> into Matt Jackson. Now it just became a brawl. This is what I was waiting for. Oh, oh, cowboy shit. Cowboy shit. Oh, fuck him up, cowboy. F him up. F him up, cowboy. F him up. Oh, that was awesome, though. Now, you almost saw a Kenny Mega heel turn because Kenny's like, okay, okay. Hey, we have to reel us, reel us ruthless aggression back down, but no. Nah. Nah, Paige just wants to fight. Matt Jackson gets pissed off. Paige slapped the gum out of the Young Bucks. That's the best. Page starts to work over the back of Matt Jackson because that has been injured. Um, you've heard about that, I think, in Ring of Honor in New Japan. Uh, it's always been been a sore spot for Matt. He's he's getting old. He's the one who's gonna like shrink two inches just like Hulk Hogan. Like Hulk Hogan. And they fuse every vertebrae in his back. Uh, he's gonna turn to the next Matt Hardy with that that. I think he has the lumbar vertebrae that like fuse together. That does that just doesn't sound good. 
then what else in this match? Oh, there's so much. The chops by Matt, to Matt Jackson by both Page and Omega. Then it starts to get ugly, baby. Because Kenny Omega does a Terminator stuff that's very predictable. Again, there was a pile driver. How does a pile driver not finish a match? Oh, that's the uh, that's my only complaint. The pile driver should be like a universal finish. That's it. Pile driver, match over. Whoever performed the pile driver wins. Uh, Paige eventually did get the hot tag. Uh, then there was the pop up. German suplex, which is amazing. I mean, Dr. Bomb got a two count. Again, Lucha Destroyer, though. Third time they pulled off a Lucha Destroyer. <sighs> they just shouldn't have done this. And they did the chicken not the kick. That's when they kind of bend a guy in half and, like, poses his face right underneath his, his butt. And you kick him in the face. That was fun. The Buster Suplex, the great, amazing chain wrestling by both the Young Bucks are so smooth. Kenny and Megan and Hangman, when they do their chain wrestling, oh, nothing can stop it. Um, there was a Tiger Driver, again, for a two count. Again, should kill someone almost. Then, I forget if it's a Tiger Driver or um, a fairy tale ending, depending who does it. Page eventually gets tossed to the outside. Again, Page hits the one with the angel, but that's only a two count. But it took him so long to to, to get over for the pin, though. That kind of makes sense. And then it took a buckshot lariat V trigger combination from Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. However, that also only led to a two count. It took like two or three buckshot lariat. Lariats after Hangman like pushed like after draw or actually he power bombed Nick Jackson. Uh, Nick yeah Nick Jackson through a table and your champions retain the Hangman. Aye, aye, aye. Adam Page and Kenny Omega. However the Terminator clap goes. I think that's how it goes. But they retain their belts. Um, the Young Bucks and Kenny shake hands. Hangman no, he says nothing. He wants a beer. Uh, Kenny Omega's left in the ring. Uh, it looks like Hangman Page is going to turn on him because he's just there staying by the ropes. But he opens up the ropes for his buddy. Hey, hug. Hug it out. Hug it out. And I'll tell you what, folks. This was a filet mignon match. I mean, you're not going to see a tag team match like this probably again for at least another year or so. I mean, it might be even five years before it's something that amazing. And then I felt bad for these two ladies somewhat. Uh, then it was Chris Ratlander taking on Nyla Rose for the Women's Champion. Uh, I felt bad because whoever had to go after that match was not going to do good. And because this is the women's divisions, it really didn't do good. Some people say it was good. Some people say it was serviceable. Whatever. Um, for the most part, it was tie-offs to the side headlock. This is rest. This is rest hold. Uh, rest hold mania. I think during this match, the crowd like died. The crowd was spent. They had to go get their food. They had to go get something to eat. They had to catch their breath. They had to text people. Oh my god, I just saw the most amazing match ever. And then it's like this. It's like, oh, there's another wrestling match? I'm going to go get a soda. Of course, Adam Hangman paid from his other match. He got his $10 beer from a, some guy in the crowd. We'll get to more about those $10 beers later. Uh, Rose, uh, Nyla Rose has a powerful... So she's a typical powerful person. She has that powerful kind of weird power slam thing into the turnbuckle. 
Rose is not the smoothest wrestler. Chris Stratlander is not, not terrific. I think Nyla Rose, her botchiness really botched up this match, though. Then there was uh, the, uh, Chris Allen did two dives, and, and Nyla Rose, she got boop, DDT'd, and then the DDT, and, and then they decided to go up to the top. Bad idea, ladies. Very, very, very bad idea. Uh, whatever it was, it was, it was, a, it was a botch, an ooch, and then it was a double uchi into another botch. Eventually, Nyla Rose hit the beast bomb. Yeah, Ny Nyla, Ro Nyla Rose wins. Uh, snack time, key time's over. Let's get to the rest of it. <sighs> this, I don't know. It might just be me. This match was a can of soup. And they really could do a lot more. They could bring up the fact that Nyla Rose had to actually have surgery to compete in the women's division, make that into something. Uh, Chris Statlander she looks like a natural woman. Um, Britt Baker is, is a really skinny natural woman. Riho's a schoolgirl. Shane is, Shane is a, a confused woman because she doesn't know what country she's from. Or if she is a searching for the Dragon Balls. Uh, the other is a, is a magical schoolgirl. At least they say she's a magical she's a magical schoolgirl. Um, Hikaru Shida. Yep, she's a woman. Big swall. Got a woman. Nyla Rose. Meet a woman. So yeah, that's the whole state of. AEW's women division. And Awesome Kong, I think, is actually filming now. Uh, what is it? Glow for WWE. Though she's not working for AEW now. She'll come back soon. Brandy Rose. I don't know. Oh, we'll, we'll wait, we'll, we'll get to Brandy Rose. Uh, Mel is, is, I don't know. And then they just pull in like random enhancement talent when they need to. So AEW's women's division needs a lot of work. Let's go to our next match. Uh, Cody Rhodes versus MJF. MJF is smart. He's, he's a heel. He goes to the outside. Uh, eventually, he works over Cody's fingers. <laughs> yeah. MJ, he also, he also tells the crowd, Folks, you're number one in my book. And then knocks the hat off some guy. It's probably that guy's best moment ever. Uh, Cody's there. With the Cody just wants to beat up MJF as much as he can. Uh, vicious strikes. That, that, that full sprint to a clothesline. Uh, MJF is smart. He's just like, boop. I poke you. And, and, and I rake you. And, and just go... Just beat up your eyes, and I'm going to take off your shoe, and I'm going to bite you in your broken toe because, well, you have a broken toe. That makes sense. Uh, eventually, Brandy Rose throws a beer. She grabs some. She grabs some poor fans' ten dollar beer, and, and beer is not cheap at venues. It's like ten bucks for a cup. She takes some guy's beer, throws it into Wardlow. What a waste of beer. Oh, and on um, Cody Rhodes now has a neck tattoo. So Cody Rhodes is is going to be a wrestler for life, folks. And I'll tell you what, Brandy, you're number one in my book, Brandy. So I'll tell you what, she was sporting that like that crop top shirt or sports bra, and Daisy Dukes. Yes, of course the crowd came back alive because because they got to relieve themselves, got to. They got to reload themselves after after that horrible Chris Statlander Nyla Rose match. Um, Brandy is just the best. She's just hot. Cody, you're, you're definitely punching above your weight limit, sir. Uh, again, MJF. Again, he did the flare strut off the ropes. Woo! 
Woo! Upset the crowd because you do not mock the nature boy. Uh, eventually, Cody kicked him out of the ring, and then MJ starts bleeding, I think, or like fell into a ketchup packet because there was no open gouge in his head or nose or near his eyes. It was just like he just like all of a sudden like turned up red. Like he like smeared ketchup over his face. Maybe he found someone's french fries. You never know. But that looked kind of really unnatural. And there was a reverse suplex. I mean, it wasn't even a blade job because you couldn't see a cut. Generally, even a blade job is going to leave a cut. Then. Yeah, they start trading blows. Cody then gets gets hubris because he hit three he hit two crossroads. Went for the third one, but of course, MJF uh, knows that like the smart heel goes into his trunks. This is around there. Oh, pulls out a foreign object. Actually, he put his ring on. I won't use that because that looks that's bad. Put his ring on, clocked Cody with the ring. That ring is like um, the new brass knuckles. Uh, Cody fell. MJF, again, didn't want to make it that obvious he fell. He just kind of like crawled over, put the arm over Cody. And he won. Good for MJF. This is actually really good. Hopefully this kind of extends it. Um, even if it does end it, it's still great. MJF is an amazing heel. He'd, he'd be a good foil also to... well. We'll, we'll find out soon. But that match, again, that was also a surf and turf match. Then we have Pac versus Orange Cassidy. Wow, Orange Cassidy. He's definitely freshly squeezed. Uh, Orange Cassidy, he's just like, yep. All calm, cool, and collected. Starts to face off Pac. Def, he definitely knows how to wrestle. And he knows how to wrestle with his hands in his pockets for some reason. Uh, Pac. He would just frustrate Pac. Uh, Orange Cassidy is definitely the king of sloth style. I like that. He can do the rope running, though. In duck. Uh, Backflip. Fly does a drop kick with his hands in the pocket. Still, still really good. Uh, eventually, you can tell Pac told... Orange Cassie, some spots. That's pretty funny. Then after suplex, Pox. After a superplex, yep, Pox suplex. Uh, Orange Cassidy says, No, I'm not done with you, mate. <laughs> I got plans to brutalize you. Then after that, Orange Cassidy juices up or hulks up. Yeah, juices up or something. Because then he starts busting out moves, tornado delete DDTs. Uh, diving DDTs, second rope DDTs, DDTs for everyone. Yeah, cross body splash onto Pac. This it doesn't seem to hurt Pac, but it seems to annoy Pac. It's like he's really trying to wrestle me. Pac was amazing this match. Pac's character work in this match is what's really carried this. Uh, but this, <laughs> I mentioned this to a friend, <laughs> a seven star. Seven star match would have to be Orange Cassidy versus Toro Yano. Oh, my friend saw that text and he's like, Yikes! Because, you know, Orange Cassidy will just be there, his hands in his pockets. It's Toro Yano. There's one on doing all the turnbuckles. He will, he will Yano him, like, the low blow with a ref's back turn. Orange Cassidy would probably do the same thing to Yano. There would be like the pillow fight, being wrapped in tape, um, being forced to drink orange juice. Uh, who, who, who knows those? Who knows what those two could think of as far as wacky, crazy, zany things? But yep, that's my seven star match: Toro Yano versus Orange Cassidy. Uh, so with this, Pox like, wait, I, I'm done with this garbage nonsense. Starts to leave. The best friends come out. 
beat up Pac, of course, and back into the ring. Then the Lucha Brothers come out and beat up best friends. So that'll be a nice little feud for a while. Uh, Pac eventually does hit the Black Arrow, does a sit-out powerbomb, then gets Orange Cassidy into the Brutalizer. And brutalizes, squeezes, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy with no pulp or into pulp. Yep, that sounds better. And that was a fun match. I have no complaints about it. It's a cheeseburger match. Then our main event of the evening, in this corner, we have the challenger from Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Cincinnati, Ohio. John Moxley. And in this corner, we have Le Champion, the pain maker from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Chris Jericho! Ready? Fight! Fight perfect. I haven't seen any fight perfect videos in a while. I'll have to see if they're still around. Uh, so this just turns into a hockey fight. Once the referee says, ring the bell, hockey fight starts. Aubrey also gets cheered. And the referee in this match is Aubrey. Yay! Aubrey gets her, her own pop. She's like the only ref besides Red Shoes, I think. That gets a pop. But, yep, it's a hockey fight, folks. They fight right into the crowd. Aubrey just kind of follows them wrong. Uh, Jericho's talking is the best. You're a piece of shit. Um, Jericho with a camera. I'm the champion. Uh, strike heavy match. And kind of what you expect from, from a Chris Jericho Max match right now. Um, let's see here. With this Moxley... Again, he takes some of his beer, splashes it around the face. Moxley gets bloody. He bites Chris Jericho's stitches. Uh, there's a uh, Jericho for, for all that power bombs. Moxley runs right to the ring bell. Ouch! Then stupid idiot Chris Jericho tells the crowd, "You are number one in my book, folks." <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, it's, it's so good. The crowd knows all of, of Chris Jericho's. Uh, Mox eventually does angle pick into the Boston crowd, which is really good. He does the ang he does a leg lace into a knee bar. Not it's not an ankle. It's not a, it's not a heel hook because Chris Jericho is facing the wrong way. You you idiot announcer, Excalibur. Um, yeah, heel hooks different. That's when you're kind of lying parallel to each other. And you kind of hook the heel, and, and you start to really put pressure on the Achilles tendon. This was more like a, kind of a knee bar. It's like a reverse four on like the one knee. Still pretty painful. Not so much the heel, but you're beginning to stretch the muscles, ligaments, and tendons that kind of hold the knee joint. Not so much together, but in its normal place, because you're trying to really like hyperextend it. That's when you have bad things happening. So Mox, again, he learns something from Randy Couture, which is good. Uh, then Chris Jericho, she shoved Aubrey. And the whole crowd had a boo, boo, boo. You don't shove Aubrey. Like, Aubrey's gonna kill you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if they did chant that, she, she'd have to laugh. Um, eventually, Aubrey, the inner circle, get involved a little bit. Aubrey sees her shenanigans and says, so you, out of here. But Sammy Guevara is very sneaky. Comes up behind Moxley, grabs the belt. He comes in from the middle of nowhere, nails, box, nails Moxley over the head with said belt. Uh, Moxley loses the eye patch. Chris Jericho is absolutely stunned. Uh, and then Moxley hits the paradigm shift onto Chris Jericho. We have a new champion! And Mox cuts like an unbridled promo. Wow, maybe he didn't need a script because this was like all over the place. He's like, I'm gonna get, some, I'm gonna go party. I'm gonna, it's it, it, zero o'clock, folks. And I'll say what this was a good match. Um, not as good 
as the Cody match, nowhere near as good as the tag team match. But still, it was really good. It was really enjoyable. A good cheeseburger match. And overall, I'll tell you what, minus the one match, this was actually an amazing showing. There's always going to be one match that's, eh. WWE, their meh matches tend to be a little bit better than this. It's rare to get a suit match out of a WWE pay-per-view. That woman's, I don't know, there was just something about it. Again, you can feel free to agree or disagree with me. Again, you have the freedom of speech, folks. I'm proud to be an American. At least I know I'm free. Oh, and that was um, AEW. Start the revolution every day. Oh wait, I just like that song. That had a pretty neat tune. It sounds like a shanty. But oh well, that was AEW, folks. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I now only have. Wow, I actually can count it down. 30. That's 31. Four. So 35 more days until I can live stream again. A uh, couple of news notes. Uh, next week's going to be kind of simple. That's going to be Monday night raw. Tuesday I have to work, so there's no video there. Uh, Wednesday will be a dual show of NWA as well as AEW. Thursday I'm off. I get to relax. Friday, the typical SmackDown. Saturday I'm off. Sunday I'm off. I get to relax a little bit. Um, eventually, I think the 15th is going to be... Uh, what is it? oh elimination chamber? So I'll give you my review upon that. Eventually, I'm gonna have Randy Reyes, or I'll do that too. That's gonna be triple A, triple A. Uh, what else is there? I think that's kind of it. And then also next week, not this coming week, but probably next week, will be my two year. Two, dos, 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 dos. Anniversary of here being on YouTube. So I'll probably put up a something, a little something episode. Um, you will see my ex-girlfriend, because I will show you the old bump I used to run until we broke up. Uh, you'll probably see the Hobo Cat. You'll see a little bit of the Hobo Studios. A little bit of the Hobo Working Area. Hmm. Yeah, so I'll give you a little insight. So what it's actually like to make these videos, you'll get to see the programs I use, probably get to see the, the, the utter frustration on my face when they don't actually work right. Or <laughs> sometimes when they don't work at all. But that's about it, folks. Again, everyone have a good work week next week, and I'll see you again Monday. Bye. Oh, fight the revolution. Hey, oh, hey. See the revolution each and every day. I can't believe I almost forgot. Right. The most important part of the whole show. Let's see here. I'm going to recap thing. Wait, there's that's why. Separate piece of paper. Let's see here. So I have Moxley winning, Clock winning. Oh, wait a second. Let's see here, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight matches. I got one, two, three, four right. So you know what that means, folks. And I can show you this. I am actually a 50-50 booker. So let's see here. So back.
Wait. Oh, yeah. I put that picture there. There you go. That's kind of the official list. See who I chose. Yep. Mox, Cody, X. Young Bucks, X. Dustin, X. Darby Allen, checkmark. Chris Ratland, riding no clue. X. Pac, yes. Dark Order, yes. Impressive. See everyone later. Bye. Because you want to fight the revolution. Way, oh, way. See the revolution each and every day. I know those in the list.